Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the first of the practical lessons in our module 3. As you can see it, theory, practice and future directions of academic planning in higher education. Today we'll be looking at how we set up a federal university from scratch. Yes, from scratch. From concept or if you like from conception to matriculation. So you talk about federal university. I mean, there are participants in our training program from other African countries. What, what, what do we mean by federal university? The university system in Nigeria uh, is partitioned into two, like you have in other countries of the world. You have the public universities, and then you have the private universities. The public universities are of two types, the federal and the state. The federal universities are owned by the federal government. You see, Nigeria, a great country, a great country in Africa, is made up of 36 states and the federal capital territory. Now, by constitution, the federal government will do its own, the state governments will do their own. And so we have federal universities, as I said, owned by the federal government, state universities owned by state governments. These are public universities, as I mentioned earlier. And then we have the private universities. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how you set up a federal university. And who is going to be our guide? It's no other than somebody who has set up a federal university. The person is a giant, yes, giant. A giant, a scholar, a great scholar in veterinary surgery, professor of veterinary surgery. And he was, he was vice chancellor of one of Nigeria's, you know, number one set, five-star universities. That's the University of Medjugorje from 2003 for five years to so 2008. Uh, we worked together while I was uh, in NUC, and I found him to be a great administrator, cool-headed, calm, collected. So did he set up a new university? Oh, yes, he did. He, he is the foundation vice chancellor of Federal University Dutse, and he's going to be telling us about the, how he set up that university as a great vice chancellor from scratch. It's now my pleasure to hand you over to our guide. I, we, you saw this in the intro video, Professor Jibrila D. Amin. Over to you, Professor J.D. Amin. Fire on, give it hot to us about how you set up a university from scratch, from concept of life from conception to matriculation we are all ears we are all ears uh, thank you very much sir for inviting me to share my experience on the establishment of uh, a federal university in nigeria from scratch uh, from concept to first matriculation uh, in this second slide i have the the synopsis of uh, the talk I will give for the next 20 minutes. And then uh, by way of introduction, um, federal universities in Nigeria are either established through a pronouncement or through a law uh, that is uh, already passed by the National Assembly and signed by Mr. President. Uh, but sometimes uh, universities are a established before such laws are promulgated. Uh, in our own case, uh, the Federal University Duse where I was involved in establishing, uh, the universities, there were nine of them at that time, were set up through a pronouncement by government. Uh, later, we, we, in conjunction with the relevant agencies of government, drafted uh, a law that uh, went through the processes up to the National Assembly and then signed into law by Mr. President. Uh, to set up a federal university in Nigeria, you could uh, categorize the, the steps involved into five. First, I call them the preliminaries, uh, then identification of the sources of funds to access for takeoff, uh, preparation of relevant documents for takeoff, uh, buildings and recruitment, uh, and then the admission, the matriculation, uh, teaching up to uh, graduation. Uh, 
for the preliminaries, in our own case, we were appointed uh, the registrar of the university of the new university, and myself were appointed by government. Uh, but sometimes it's quite possible that government, and it's even more desirable that government does by uh, appointing councils to uh, appoint the principal officers. Uh, whichever uh, procedure is adopted, uh, the principal officers then uh, go to the community to introduce, they get introduced to the state governor and the state executive council. Uh, at this point, they sort out issues related to land, to issues related to take-off ground, uh, I mean, the, the take-off site, uh, and then seek other forms of assistance from the state government. Uh, they will also need to interact with the host community, the local government, other institutions of government, and other universities uh, in the area of their uh, operation. Uh, and at this stage, the principal officers of the university will need some hands, capable hands, to assist them uh, in the process of uh, kickstarting the university. So a project implementation committee is usually set up, and this uh, consists of university administrators, uh, experienced uh, uh, academic planners, uh, professors in various disciplines, uh, professionals in the construction industry and uh, several other people. Uh, then uh, once the project implementation committee is uh, set up, you, you need to, or while you are setting up the PIC, you need to find sources of funds for takeoff. Uh, usually in Nigeria, the federal government these days give takeoff grant from uh, the tertiary education trust fund known as simply known as state fund and uh, but this may be tied to specific projects usually buildings equipment uh, and so on but not for paying salaries and running costs uh, then eventually federal universities are given funds from the federal uh, budget uh, annually uh, this is usually for capital for personnel and for overhead uh, general expenditure. Uh, the principal officers of the university may also seek for funds from other agencies of government, ministries, departments, and agencies of government. And uh, they can also seek funds from philanthropists and uh, other organizations to enable them uh, to start the, the, the university. Once students are admitted and enroll into the institution, they are expected, of course, to pay some fees. Uh, of course, uh, Nigerian students are not expected to pay tuition fees in federal uh, universities, but they pay for various charges, and uh, uh, even that, you have to be careful how much you charge, otherwise you attract a lot of uh, unnecessary attention. Uh, when th these things are uh, done with, uh, there are also other uh, the, the, the documents to be prepared. You, once you have the PIC ready, uh, there are documents, some of them are based on the National University Commission in Nigeria guidelines. And uh, these documents are very important for you to be able to start uh, the university on uh, a very sound footing. And some of these documents are number one, the academic brief. Uh, the approved format by the NUC is available. Uh, this document deals with details about mission, uh, vision of the university, the identity of the university, its structure, uh, various phases of development, uh, its research and allied policies, uh, the various non teaching. Uh, uh, and teaching personnel requirements, the financial projections for the university, and some monitoring and evaluation goals. It's a very important document to have uh, in, the, in the university, especially at these uh, initial stages. Then there's the physical master plan, which, it is, which now translates what you have in the academic brief uh, physically, or you need to um, you need to have professionals in the building, in the construction industry to help you to plan for the 
side of uh, university, which buildings will come in phase one, phase two, phase three, and so on, uh, which facilities you need, water, electricity, uh, telephone services, bandwidth, and, and so on and so forth. All these come under the physical and uh, master plan. Uh, you also need to do an environmental impact assessment of your project. Uh, by law, every any project that is uh, beyond a certain uh, magnitude is required to be subjected to environmental impact assessment. Then you will be involved in drafting the, the university law, and uh, this goes through various processes to the ministry, to NEC, to the ministry, to Federal Executive Council, and then through the Ministry of Justice, it goes to the National Assembly, and uh, if it is the bill is passed, it goes to Mr. President to uh, enact it into a law. That is for universities that were established through pronouncement. Then you need a strategic plan. This document goes a little bit beyond the academic brief by creating strategic goals and action plans for the attainment of the goals. It requires a lot of brainstorming, and you should, as much as possible, involve all stakeholders. Uh, in a strategic plan document, you should be able to plan, for example, to graduate your first set of students within the your five years of tenure as uh, principal officers of the university. And there are several, in fact, many administrative documents that you need to uh, to come up with documents to guide appointments and promotions, uh, financial uh, regulations, uh, the administrative manual students, manual prospectuses, and, and so on and so forth. All this uh, you need to uh, learn from the experience of other universities and come up with your own uh, set of documents. Uh, then while you are doing that, you can also uh, try to start uh, uh, the infrastructure and recruitment of personnel needed to uh, to establish the university. Uh, there is usually, as I said, a budget for your uh, recruitment. Uh, this comes from the, the annual appropriation budget. But if you are established uh, outside the annual appropriation time, uh, you may be given uh, money from the service-wide board to to, to start uh, the university before you latch on to the annual budget. Uh, of course, the recruitment processes is an evolving phenomena in Nigeria. Now we are under the, the so-called um, uh, EPs, which um, has taken away a little bit of the powers for recruitment from vice chancellors and councils of universities. But uh, these are all things that are evolving, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, we, we will not encroach too much into university autonomy in the long run. Uh, you need to build facilities from the take of grant and other sources of, uh, uh, as initiated in your master plan. Then you admit students. We admit students in, in Nigeria uh, jointly with JAM. We call it the Joint Admissions and Matriculation. Uh, and uh, they register. Uh, through uh, accepted procedure and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so the, you should make adequate preparations to be sure that students have the facilities they need. Since it's a new university, you only admit for the number of students you can cater for. Uh, no need to put yourself under too much pressure to over-admit and, and so on and so forth. You, you have to take cognizance of the facilities you have uh, before you uh, set up a quota for your own university. Of course, the NUC and JAM will also come in in uh, approving uh, whatever quota you, you think would be uh, good for your university. Uh, then there are several challenges that are involved in the establishment of a uh, new university. The main, the number one challenge is to get the appropriate staff. Uh, you need seasoned professors and good uh, quality administrators, but they're already engaged usually in other universities. And therefore, to uproot them, to bring them to your own university, you need some incentive. 
And uh, even the, those that have not reached the peak of their career who are lecturers, one senior lecturers and so on, uh, if you get good ones, you certainly have to entice them to bring them to, to your university because most of these people have their families uh, set up in, in a different environment, uh, their children go to school and so on and so forth. So you need to find ways and means of attracting them by giving them some responsibility so they can handle them properly for you. Uh, and then there's the challenge of building uh, infrastructure. Uh, this is a tricky one because many businessmen, when they hear that you are in a new place, their first reaction is to, is to congratulate you and to seek patronage despite knowing that there are laws and regulations governing the award of contract. Uh, this is a major risk. And the best way to tackle it is to operate on the side of the law, no matter who will be disappointed. And then there's the challenge of uh, doing things differently. Since you are in a new university, you should be able to uh, bring some innovation, bring some uh, good things that are, uh, are different from what the older universities are doing. The older universities uh, may find difficulty in in, in, in reforming their system, but you are dealing with a new uh, university and uh, you should be able to start on a very, very clean slate and uh, you should be able to start um, uh, in a manner that uh, efficiency is guaranteed, discipline will be there, there will be enhancement of merit and so on and so forth. So it's very important to do things differently for the betterment of your new university. Then there's the challenge of managing the expectations of the host community. Uh, the host community uh, is a serious challenge because there's always this sense of entitlement from the host community, both in terms of employment and award of contract. Uh, some host communities can be very hostile uh, regarding land tenure issues. Uh, you need a high sense of emotional intelligence, diplomacy, negotiation skills, and so on to manage the situation, otherwise you will continue to be distracted and attract a lot of frivolous petitions. Uh, you need to draw their attention as to how to compete with other Nigerians for positions and contracts. And you also need to evolve ways and means of touching their lives and positively impacting their youth, especially as part of your community service engagement. Uh, what lessons do we have for the academic planners? The lessons uh, uh, really has to do with these challenges that I just talked about. Academic planners, uh, the core of the, the, the academia, uh, in uh, serve as a link between the the, 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 the academics and the non-academics and uh, the, uh, even the community. So academic planners in our university should be very versatile personalities, conversant with the nitty gritty of establishing university from scratch and uh, be very conversant with the challenge this involved in establishing these uh, universities, the teaching problems associated and to navigate these uh, problems and uh, the situation successfully uh, and be good ambassadors of the academia town and ground issues. So these are some of the challenges that uh, uh, academic planners uh, uh, facing establishing uh, new universities. Uh, in conclusion, uh, establishing new universities uh, is both challenging and exciting. It is an opportunity to do things well and to write your name in gold. Uh, if you are from Ghana or Zamfara State, where we have gold in Nigeria. Uh, this is an opportunity to write your name in gold. Or if you work in the Sahelian environment, uh, it's an opportunity to leave your footprints in the sand of time. If you do it well, you will not just have your reward in heaven, but you will be well, well appreciated while you are still alive. So thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>